Can you airbrush using Gundam markers? Well, that is the question that we will be taking a look at today. My name is Todd and this is Gunpla TV. All right, before we get started today, I just want to kind of make a little bit of a disclaimer that this is not really going to be a 100% tutorial on how to do it more. Today's video is more of just taking a look at that question about whether it is actually possible to airbrush using nothing but the Gundam markers. So if you guys build Gundams out there, you are more than likely really familiar with these Gundam paint markers made by GS, Mr. Hobby GSI Krios. They come in a variety of different colors and they have been around for many, many, many years. I couldn't tell you exactly how long these paint markers have been around, but it's been quite some time. And actually GSI Krios a few years ago released this rather nifty looking airbrush system for Gundam markers. Now originally this thing was only available here in Japan because this initial boxing which I am holding right here. Now this boxing that I'm holding you actually cannot buy on our international site hlj.com because this boxing when it was first released it included a can of air compressed air so you could use this to actually spray with your airbrush so unfortunately this can of compressed air is flammable so that makes it ineligible for shipping overseas so at the time that this was initially released yeah this was only available on our dot on our J japan site so that was not available however just last year i think it was GSI Krios finally brought us this new, much smaller boxing of this uh, Gundam marker airbrush. So this box right here, which uh, retails on our site for 2,340 yen only, this version of the airbrush only includes the handpiece, which you will need to uh, spray using the markers. So this handpiece that is included with this international box without the compressed air, uh, it does not include any hoses. It does not include a, let me show it over here, this attachment piece that you could connect to the can of uh, compressed air and be able to use that to spray it. It does not include the hose, which this box also included when it was released there. Only the handpiece. However, there is one difference that I noticed when I was looking at this hand piece here in the box and that is and actually it kind of this is the version that I own is this Japanese version and this one actually had I known I would have gotten this one actually instead of this one but this one the connection point on the airbrush itself is a standard hose connection which is going to be pretty much the same for any of the airbrush uh, hoses out there that you can find the one for the Japan edition with the air spray it's a much smaller connection point I couldn't even tell you exactly what the size of this thing is but it did not fit with any standard airbrush hoses unfortunately so I do have it connected here and I'll take a look at how I have that connected in a second though but yeah two versions of this handheld uh, Gundam marker airbrush are available but only this one is only available here in Japan so you might be wondering kind of why I decided to go ahead and make this video today and that is because if you have been watching our channel you may have noticed that I have been on a quest if you will say to complete a collection of 1144 scale RX 78 Gundams. I have put together pretty much all of the recent releases and now I'm getting more towards the older stuff. I only have a few a few left that we sell on our site that are still available for purchase that uh, I haven't put together yet and the one that I am going to be doing here next is the original 1980 release. So yes, this kit is 40 years old, which is actually as old as I am. I am as old as this kit, which is yeah, makes me sad in a way. But yeah, back in the day, they Gundam or Bandai did not produce their kits in a multiple in different colors like they do these days. They were not snap fit kits. They are kits that you have to glue together. Although he does have some slight bit of articulation, but we'll take a look at that in a full review of this guy at a later point. 
but I really wanted to maybe try to do one of these guys here that was actually painted in the colors of a standard Gundam and not just have him be this plain white color like he comes in the box. And to do that, I had a grand idea. This is the perfect chance for me to test out this Gundam uh, GSI Creos airbrush system for Gundam markers because they also have this set here which I'm going to be using the Gundam marker set for and this is basically your standard Gundam colors here we got the white the blue the red and yellow as well as a metallic silver type of color so I figured hey this might be my chance maybe I'll try to use these the airbrush system and these Gundam markers to try and color this guy now, however, doing some tests at home over the last weekend, I realized that I maybe bit off a little bit more than I can chew. I don't think it's going to be really possible for me to 100% airspray this guy using only the Gundam markers. But uh, that is what we're going to be taking a look at today is how well does this airbrush system work with these Gundam markers. Now, to help me here today also, you will notice here on the right side of this video, I have this cardboard box which looks like it has a cat scratch board on the inside and this is actually a new item that just went up for pre-order on our site and this is brought to us by Beaver Corporation. Now if you've ever watched our Shizuoka Hobby Show videos you might remember Brian, He's, he used to do the boss builds here on Gunpla TV a long time ago. He now works over at the Beaver Corporation which is our subsidiary for importing stuff into Japan and from Beaver Corporation, they have actually produced, they are actually producing their own version of a, I don't want to call it a spray booth because it's not really a spray booth, but a, a paint box, I guess, maybe the best thing to call it here. It does not have a fan, so it's not going to be extracting any paints to outside or anything like that. It is just a plain kind of a cardboard box with a filter here, and it actually has another filter on the inside. Now you might be kind of wondering just exactly how well does this thing work and that's kind of another reason that I'm doing this video today is so that I can kind of show off this little bit, this little paint box that we got from the Beaver Corporation. So it's going to be exciting. You can actually tell it's been used a little bit before. But actually even though it does not have a fan, so it, if you're painting anything like a lacquer paint or an enamel which has a really strong fume you probably should do use a actual uh, spray booth that is going to uh, extract that kind of toxic air to the outside so you won't have to breathe it in but if you're doing stuff like acrylic paints and if you were doing stuff uh, like these markers which are non-toxic this is one of the reasons we can ship these markers overseas is that they're non-toxic then this is a, this is a rather good item to be able to catch that kind of ex excess overspray so you're not spraying uh, stuff onto your table or any items that you don't would don't want to get paint onto so I'm going to go ahead and be using this box today also before I forget this box retails on our site for a very low price of I think it's 1100 yen so not that expensive for this fancy cardboard box and it does fold flat so when you order this item it's not going to come in this huge box like this it's going to be folded flat so you will be able to shave a little bit on the shipping fee for this paint box which is kind of exciting there let's talk a little bit about this uh, hand piece here that we have so you can see I have a hose connected to this thing I don't want to use this can so what I am using here and you will see I have a hose connected to this hand piece here now I did mention that the hose that I got or the airbrush hand piece that I got from this box had a smaller kind of connector to it which did not work with a standard air airbrush type of connection on the hose there but however because this thing is so small the connection here is actually small what I did discover is that the standard air hose and this is actually a Tamiya air hose here I just removed the connection piece that was on the inside there and the hose itself is just perfect just about the perfect diameter to stretch over the connection point and make a rather nice sealed connection there and my source of air I will be using now this is something that I purchased myself a long time ago before I ever started working here at Hobby Link Japan now this is a rather old sturdy workhorse of mine and this is the Tamiya Spraywork Revo 
So this version of the Revo air compressor, they don't actually sell the black ones anymore. It's still available on our site, but now it has a white plastic casing to it. It's pretty much, I think they actually call it the Revo 2 now as well, but it's pretty much the exact same thing. Just the outside of it is a different color. And these things, it's, it's, Mm, it's a it's a rather decent uh, airbrush compressor if you're new to airbrushing then this is actually not a bad way to go it is small and it is lightweight and it that makes it uh, a bit portable as well so I was able to easily it's got a handle to it so I was able to easily grab this thing from my room at home and just bring it with me here to work today the compressor that I use for the most part these days at home is one of those larger twin piston compressors. This is, I think, a diaphragm style uh, airbrush compressor and not uh, the piston style. I've moved on to the piston style and the twin pistons. One that I have produces a bit more pressure than this thing is able to do, but I think it outputs about uh, 15 PSI. So that is going to be just about perfect for what we need here for this airbrush system Gundam marker thing and I will keep it on the floor because this thing is a bit noisy and if I keep it on the floor here the vibrations are going to be kept at a minimum so I did mention also that I will not be painting this guy here in this video here because it's going to need a ton of masking work but we'll go ahead and we'll still look at this marker system here and see just exactly how well this thing works so before i get started i want to lay down some paper towels here so that i'm not going to be spraying excess paint over this table so give me one second all right so first up i'm going to start off with the red because i think this is going to be the easiest color to test and to be able to show you guys on the camera here now a couple of things to point out right away is the tip of the marker, when you insert it into this airbrush holder thing, it has to be exactly perfectly lined up. You can't have the marker too much forward, too forward, and you can't have the marker too far back. It has to be exactly like a straight, even line on the tip of the airbrush here so that that is going to be able, the air is going to come out of the tip of this airbrush and it's going to pass over the tip of the marker. And that's how we should be able to get the paint out of the marker onto whatever it is we are spraying onto. And then another thing to note before you do this is you will need to push that tip of the marker onto any kind of surface there so you can get the paint actually flowing there onto the tip. If you don't do that, the tip of your marker is going to be dry and you are going to get zero paint out of it. So be sure to do that as well. Now, another one last thing to note here is the direction of the tip on the marker is something that you would need to uh, be have at the perfect angle as well. It's got to be straight. So you can't have the marker in here sideways. You can't have it at a weird like 45 degree angle as you can see here in the instruction manual. So here we have a little diagram here in the manual and it's showing that it has to be perfectly straight. It can't be any of these weird angles. So be sure to get that lined up perfectly. And all right, so for this initial test here, I am actually using this airbrush plugged into the spray can the Mr. Krios or Mr. Hobby, the Mr. Air Spray, and this is just the 190 size. This is actually what came in the box for the Japan edition. Unfortunately, we can't share these compressed, we can't ship the compressed air cans outside of Japan because they are hazardous, but you should be able to find a similar type of can in whatever country you're using. And we'll test the uh, my 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 Tamiya air compressor that I showed off earlier as well. So we'll test to see if that works with the compressor as well. But first off, we're just going to do a test with the spray or the air can there. All right, so are you guys ready? So I have some just plain white A4 sized paper. What do they call A4 size in America? I forget. So I'm gonna just be using this to. We um, call it A4. In you UK. call it in UK. Yeah. I can think of something completely Don't different. Do on this too the... as well, just to see it so, on plastic. Yeah. So I'm going to be testing out on the plastic as well, so we can see. Uh, plastic spoons are a common test material for testing paints and airbrushes, so I just wanted to see this how it works on uh, plastic as well. But first off, let's go ahead and see what we get spraying it on the paper. So you guys ready? Well, that is spraying beautifully. Look at that. Actually, this is actually better results than I was really expecting. To be honest. That is nearly 
almost as good as what I would see with a regular old airbrush, I have to say. I mean, red, of course, is the easiest color to see. Let's try it with a plastic spoon. And you gotta remember, this is so much cheaper than a regular full-on airbrush setup here. So let's move it over. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna need to do some kind of coats here. So you need, the manual instructs you, instructs you to start seven centimeters off the side so that we don't get the initial splatter on whatever it is you're spraying at, and then move over. So you're gonna just kind of keep doing it in kind of layers there. So you just start off seven centimeters over and then you move over. So you're gonna need to do a couple of different coats to be able to build oh, up a nice, beautiful. a nice beautiful layer. So I think actually this airbrush marker system, I think is going to be able to work for what I was intending for, so I want to try and color my, that old school Gundam kit with the, just using the Gundam markers alone. So unfortunately I don't have enough time to do that entirely in this video, so I'll try to do that. I'll try to get that thing colored and we'll show it off when I do a review of that kit later on, so be sure to stay tuned for that, but yeah. All right, so the red is looking pretty good. Actually, before I move on from the red, I wanna do one more test on my own here. And that is how well does this work with the compressor? The compressor. So let's move off of the can there. So at least with the can, we know it's spraying beautiful. I'm gonna move this paper here. And this is uh, very cold. Now those cans, if you ever dusted a personal computer, it's the same type of can compressed air that you use for uh, dusting computers and electronic devices. So you know those things, if you use them very long, they get quite cold. And unfortunately, once they get kind of cold, they lose their pressure and you kind of have to wait for it to warm up a bit before you can keep spraying. That's the same thing with that. All right, so now I have my hose for my Tamiya compressor plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn this on. So you might hear a slight hum in the back. I'm keeping this on the floor, so it's not gonna be as noisy as if I was keeping it on a table, but let's go ahead and crank this on. The Tamiya compressor, <laughs> this, uh, the Spraywork Revo, this is actually a rather silent compressor, which is one of the reasons I yeah. kind of like it. It's good for when you're spraying it, like really late hours, you don't want to. Scott had, had one on his, um, I take my mask off. Scott oh. had one on his uh, little show when he built the tank and it was very loud. So this is okay. actually quite a low hum compared to what yeah, you've made. Yeah, this is a low hum. hum. I mean, the diaphragm compressors aren't as great as what you get with a com piston compressor. Piston compressors are still better. They do they have a higher PSI, of course, and you can regulate it a bit better, but uh, they are a bit noisy. So, all right, let's try it here with the compressor. Let's kind of see what kind of results we get if we get the same type of result. All right, so yeah, that's actually pretty decent results there with this compressor compared to what we were seeing with that can, I think. You should be able to get this working there with just a straight up compressor. Let's maybe try a little bit at the tip of this marker, see here? Yeah, I mean, oh, look at that. Beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so yeah, compressor definitely works as well with that can. So I think you can sell it. you can see here, even though we can't ship those compressed air cans overseas, you should be able to use this marker airbrush setup with a compressor as well and get just as beautiful of results. And of course with the compressor, you don't have to keep switching out the cans. You don't have to worry about it getting too cold over time. You can just straight go ham with the compressor and spray to your heart's content. Still until, cold. <laughs> yeah, I think it's cold until you run out of, uh, until you run out of uh, paint in your markers anyway. So there we have it. Yeah, that's actually, that you got, what do you guys say? That is actually, I mean, this is just one coat too as well. The, I think the point we hear with these with the marker airbrush system is that you don't have to have the expensive stuff. So the marker yeah. sets, they're quite cheap. This Gundam marker set that I'm working with here, this whole set which came with, uh, I think, five different of the paint markers and then one of these, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the the panel line type of thing. But you can't use these small ones. It only works with the large one. This thing costs less than a thousand yen for five different colors. So that's 200 yen per marker basically. And then you also get that small one included as well. And this, this airbrush handle set here, this thing is less than 2000 yen. So you're looking at a total of 3000 yen between these two and then a, a compressed air can and the hose. I mean, you should, be able to find, yeah, we got two. We're, we're balling here. So uh, you should be able to find those compressed air cans overseas for less than 10 bucks, less than whatever a thousand yen is that the, 
the the cord what or the the hose you need for it that probably shouldn't cost you too much if you got hobby hobby shops overseas you should be able to find those compressed air cans as well so i mean you're looking at less less than 50 bucks i think to get started here with just a rather simple airbrush solution and with the gundam markers as well you've got a whole slew of different colors i mean this set that i'm working with here is just your rather basic kind of gundam colors which you which is what I need for that old OG RX-78 that I'm using with, but they've got metallic Gundam markers as well. They've got Zaku colors. They've got Gundam seed colors. There's a whole slew of Gundam marker colors that you can use for when you are painting these things. So it's rather, it's, it's a rather decent deal, I have to say. Rather good, good, not bad, not bad. So if it's your, kind of your introduction to airbrushing, you've never done this before, this might not be such a terrible way to go. Especially if you're not sure if you want to go ham and spend so much money buying a $200 compressor, another $100 or so for an airbrush and other accessories and then your paints and then you have to deal with cleaning. That's another good thing I want to mention about this system right here before I move on to looking at some of these other colors that I have is the cleanup for this is a hundred times easier than when you're working with paints and you have to clean up the paints and especially when you have one of the dual action airbrushes with a little paint cup on top and you have to clean that thing out and you have to tear apart your airbrush you have to clean the needle that just tends there's a lot more work involved with just straight airbrushing with using the paints and the thing and whatnot with the marker once you're done you remove the marker you put the cap on it there is no cleaning needed for this handle at all because the paint doesn't touch the handle unless you screwed something up so it's just completely extremely easy to clean this system up after you are done using you just remove everything put the cap on and that's it you're done and it's quite quite great quite nice all right so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other colors we got here so we're getting some rather beautiful results with the red but how are we gonna how are we gonna uh, see some of these other colors so let's test these out all right so I've got some other stuff to do and it might be actually beneficial for you guys to see somebody else try this out so Dave's here with me today he's going to be helping me out to try this out with some of these other colors here so and also another one I mentioned I mentioned it during the opening here so we've got our beaver kind of little paint booth here it's not a real spray booth type thing it's it's a, it's a cardboard thing so this is quite nice to have so you can spray into without having to ruin uh, other stuff or spray f or breathe the fumes although to be honest with this marker system here I don't really notice the fumes that much these the markers really aren't Kind of poisonous toxic you're not kind of spraying lacquer stuff but uh, if you are ever do kind of use any more markers or any kind of paints that have maybe a bit more fumes to them or you want to protect whatever you're spraying against then this cheap like 1200 yen little paint box here is not a bad investment and as i mentioned earlier it comes flat packed so it shouldn't be terrible it shouldn't cost terribly too much to ship so another great thing to take a look at i think so with that i'm going to go ahead and hand this over to dave now so there we have it that's our look at this uh, Gundam marker airbrush system from Mr. Hobby and I gotta say I'm actually quite impressed with the results that I got out of this system here actually I kind of maybe wasn't really because ex considering just how cheap this thing is I was maybe not expecting expecting it to kind of cover as beautifully as I saw here with the test that we were doing here so actually not a bad deal not a bad investment for as little as this thing costs and even if you have even if you are like me and you have a slew of airbrushes at home you have a slew of dual actions and different sizes and whatnot this is still kind of quite fun to own and to play with it's definitely 
unique. It's definitely a, a unique kind of tool. So even if even if you're like me and you have a, a, a number of different airbrushes to play with already, this is actually something I think that is kind of quite fun to play with. And as I mentioned earlier, the cleanup on it is just quite extremely simple. So I'm definitely, I'm going to keep this for my personal collection. And should I, should I ever have like a need to spray something really, really quickly and not want to deal with mixing the paints, thinning the paints and all that cleanup and whatnot. This might actually be the tool that I go into my toolbox and I grab first. If it's just something I need to spray some rather quickly and it's a simple color, maybe something that is covered by that Gundam paint marker lineup. Uh, another thing that I did kind of want to mention, these Mr. Hobby GSI Creos, they do... Uh, these are produced for Mr. Hobby by another paint marker company now. I think it was Posca actually, but they actually have these exact same paint markers with a whole slew of like standard colors in that you can find in stationery stores around here in Japan. So I might actually try to pick up some of these paint markers, the regular straight Posca paint markers, and see if I can use, just use those to spray as well. I think it probably should work. So. so yeah, as long as the tip is the same, hopefully it should work. So that would be interesting to see. But yeah, I'm actually quite impressed. This is a good buy. Definitely you should add one of these to your uh, budget, even if you are a seasoned airbrusher, I feel. So thank you guys out there very much for watching this video. Now I am going to, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to try and see if I can use this system to paint that old school 1980 release RX 70A. I don't, my initial vision for this video when I pitched it was that I was going to try and use the system to paint that, but just there's no way I'm going to have enough time to do that on here for the camera, but I will try Filing it. On the day. Yeah, <laughs> so this is just, it wasn't going to work, but I'm going to be using this at home and I'm going to grab all, all my Tamiya masking tapes and I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to see if I can get this thing to paint me a beautiful 1980-1144 scale RX-78. So if you want to see the results of that, stay tuned. I'll have a review up of that. I don't know when it's going to be because it's going to take me some time to get that done. Plus we've got perfect grades. It's December now, perfect grades are on the horizon, so I'm gonna be maybe quite busy, but well, I'll get to that as soon as I can. So definitely stay tuned. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of video and you kind of wanna see more of this type of stuff, definitely let us know in the comments below. And if you're one of our, how, what percent is it? Like 40% of our viewers are watching that are not subscribed. It's a rather high percentage. If you are one of those one of those viewers that are not yet subscribed to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. <laughs> and we also do a 5,000 yen Hobby Link Japan store credit giveaway once a month. So all you need to do to enter into that is leave a comment here on YouTube or on our actual hobbylink.tv blog. So that's going to do it. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks again for watching. We hope you all out there have a great December and look forward to more exciting Gundam stuff coming up on our channel here in the future.